Hello again, this video continues where we left off in basics video number one. Here is the next line in my journal. It's a baptism for the couple we have just seen married. So in terms of gramps, I need to add an individual, the child, to the database and then the fact that it was born and baptised, two separate events. We can add to the family the fact that they took part in a baptism. I can add a father's occupation. I can put in their address. And as I took a picture of the uh, register, I can include the image as part of that event. So let's go and do that now in Grams. Before I add the person, you'll notice I've now emptied the clipboard by clicking on the Clear All button. To add a child to an existing family, the simplest way I find is to go to the family, find them here, Mary and William, double click, and we can then click on the plus sign here, creates a new person within the family. So I can then type in Jane as the child, type in agendas, female, and click OK. Gramps prompts you to add information about the relationships to mother and father if you know it then you can confirm it and add a source for that. For now I'm just going to click OK to that and I'm going to click OK here as well. If I go back to the people I can then double click Jane to bring up her individual reference and I can then start thinking about adding in information about her birth and her baptism. So, I'm going to add in, plus, because it's the first entry, Gramps automatically prompts you, is this a birth? And because it is, let's take advantage of that, that's brilliant. And her birth was the 21st of November, 1830. And I can quote my source. Now, it's an existing source, but it's a different citation. So... I can click on existing and I can double click on St John's again so I've got that and I just have to put in the new date 21st of November 1830 and I can now put in from my journal page 99 and it's entry number 788 and I can click OK. Now because I know I'm going to again refer to this source I'm going to click that and I'm going to drag it off onto the clipboard for future use. So I've now got everything I need for this birth event. It's a primary role because it applies to Jane. Click OK. It's in. Add another plus. Um, Gramps wants to prompt me for a death, but I prefer to put in a baptism here, so start by clicking that. Put in 14th of December 1830 from the record. I can put in there's a description, baptism of Adam's Jane. I know where it took place because it took place in the church, so I can click and expand to find the church again. Double click when I get there to pop it straight in. What's the source of my information? It's a citation. Drop that on. Click OK. So now we have the baptism. I'm going to copy that event over to the clipboard as well because it, this baptism wasn't just for Jane, it was also for her parents. So I'm going to click OK to finish editing Jane and I'm going to go back to the family of William and Mary. I'm going to click on their events tab. And you see I've already got one family event as a marriage, which we've just ended. I'm now going to drag this baptism down onto a family event and I'll drop it below marriage. Cramps prompts me with all the shared information, but wants to know what this particular entrance is. So I'm going to say it's a family event because the mother, the father and the child were involved. Click OK and now it's added that into 
the record for that family and for those individuals. Click OK. What I can also now do is go back to the father, William. You'll see here that the baptism is reflected on his individual screen. Of course, I also know from the journal that he was a shipwright. So I can do plus, I can highlight that and put in occupation. And I can type in that on the 14th of December, 1830, his occupation was shipwright. How do I know that? Because of this citation. Click, drag that down, drop it in place, OK, OK. The next piece of information to add from my journal is the family address. This is where you may want to do something different to me. If you go to the Gramps Wiki, there is an article titled Why Residents Event and Not Address. I would recommend you read this to understand some of the issues. I have read it and have come to the conclusion that I'm going to add 16 Clayton Road both as a residence event and as an address for the family. Naturally this is more effort but I find that the effort is worthwhile when I look at the output I get from Gramps. So to add a place click on the places tab. I'm now going to go to the hierarchical view right click to expand all the nodes and click on Newcastle. Click the plus to add Clayton Road as it's a street in Newcastle upon Tyne. Its type is street. Click OK and Clayton Road's in. Click on Clayton Road again. Now type in the number 16. This is a house number which we don't have a type for so I'm going to create my own custom type. And personally I don't like the comma in the title after 16 so I'm going to delete that and then click OK and expand the nodes and you'll see 16 Clayton Roads there. Now go back to William Adams and I can add an event for a residence so over type click residence put in the date of the event Click for select place, browse through the hierarchy to find 16, double click it, in it goes. And then there's description, I never quite know what to write here, so I just write residence. Can't add anything more useful. You'll notice I kept the citation in the clipboard, so I've just dragged it down, added it to the event, and bang, there we go. The event is now added. I'm going to keep a copy of that because I'm going to use it again in a moment. Now I'll click on the address tab and enter in the address. Put in the date the address was recorded. Type in the address 16 Clayton Road, the county Northumberland, country UK, city Newcastle upon Tyne. And then we drag the citation down onto the source tab. Click, click OK and there's our address entered for William Adams. I'm now going to copy that to the clipboard because like the event I'm going to use it again. Just checking everything, click OK for William Adams and we're finished with him. Find Mary Twaddle and now I'm going to click and drag the address onto the address tab for Mary Twaddle and it's entered immediately. Do the same with the residence event drop it just below the birth. The only thing we have to do here is add the role which is primary and click OK and both residence event and address are now added to her. We do exactly the same for Jane. Here's the address onto the address tab. Here's the event onto the event tab. Drop it below the baptism and then it'll appear chronologically correct. Primary click OK and that's their records up to date. And lastly for that event I took a copy of the register and I'm going to add it now. So open the baptism event, go to the gallery tab, say add an image, find the image in your drive, double click it, 
OK, in it goes. And now click OK and you have in front of you the birth record. Click OK and that's now added. If then at a future time you want to view that, double click on the baptism, go to the gallery tab, select the image, right click to view it and your computer viewer will open that up and then zoom in and read the entry. We're now going to move on to our next journal entry which includes some new sources, places and events. So here we are adding our new source for St Cuthbert's Church Wall's End. Do it in the same way we've done previously. Now go to Add Places, so the place under Newcastle, Wall's End. To locality, and the walls end, we're going to add the church, and then the walls end. We're also going to add a place, walls and key. They're what I call the building blocks. So we can now go to William Adams and enter the event for his death. Now add the new source, the St Cuthbert's Church, put in the entry for date and where we found it in that source. Remembering we're going to keep a copy of this, we're bound to refer to it again shortly. Put it on the clipboard. We don't know where Bill died, so we've left the place of his death. But we do know where he was buried, at the church, so we can add that in under the burial entry. And we're going to add under the attributes the his age. You can also update the entry for his birth because we've got an implied age from his death age. Add that to the source. We also have where he lived at the time of his death. Double click walls and key. Enter that in. I like to move the death, the residence up above the burial so that it looks neater. Now I'm also going to update but an alternative name. So if you go to the names tab and then enter in Bill, but you must enter the surname and press enter. You've got some options for known as, but also you can have recorded as. I've seen uh, people's names recorded incorrectly or differently, so this is a way of now capturing them. 
The next four entries in my journal I'm going to enter off the line to add more detail to my tree. Now that I've entered all that data into Gramps, it's time to review where we are. So on the people screen you can see that we've got the same people but we've got an additional person at the top, Mary, without a surname. Now this is Mary Twaddle's mother who we don't know a surname. And you can see this in the relationship view. There's George, Mary's father, but Mary's mother was called Mary in the baptism register and we've just entered what we know. Families is much the same. The events is building up very nicely with a large number of events. We've expanded our place hierarchies quite significantly. We've also added a few more sources and it's probably timely to show you that if you click here you can expand that up to show the citations beneath them as well. We've added some repositories including the National Archives and the Find My Past and I've added a note. Now I'm going to double click on this note to show you how I write these notes. I write it with a header so that I can easily identify what the note's about and then the text within the note. Let's go back to events. If I click on the death event for Mary Twaddle you'll see how I've used that note. It's in the bottom there. And I've also for that event I've added an attribute of age 80 years which I got from the journal. Here similarly for the burial I've added where she was buried. And for her birth I've been able to add another entry based on the journal that I've got. And finally John Adams I've added in the National Archives visit I made in reference to it and a copy of the semen certificate that I took and I've added that into his. So let's now look at a text report for Maori Twaddle. Complete individual report. There's lots of options you can do but accept the default for now just to get you going and here we have a summary of Maori Twaddle as we know her now. See how we've got a mother Mary without a surname but also look at the text for the sources and for the note how that's been added in because of uh, the way we did it. Here's the residences, this is who she was married to and her children and there's the source information that was referred to earlier. I also like the narrative web report which I carry around on my smartphone. You have run it from here and there's lots of options in the tabs but for now the only thing that I'm interested in changing and highlighting is the fact that it's going to a folder called Demo NW which I'm now opening in my file manager and you can see there's lots of files it doesn't really matter too much just double click on index and your browser will open with this. This is an index of the surnames you can click on a surname to expand. The tabs at the top are very familiar from the Gramp screen but most useful I find the individuals list all of them also gives you their birth and their death and partner information in a summary at the top. Click on the individual person, Mary, and now we've got a very, very readable web page telling us all about Mary. So there's a birth. There's the text information we've been adding again, including the descriptions and attributes, where they came from. Here's a wedding and uh, a parents, also showing the attributes very very readable when you're out in the field doing research. It adds a pedigree which expands obviously as you add more data and an ancestral tree beneath it. I'd like to leave you with a final thought. I keep two family trees in Gramps. The main one is my active tree that's current and up to date and I have a test family tree which has all data in. If I come across a new concept that I need to explore I will try that out in the test database. I'll enter data, see how it looks, and then decide whether or not I want to use that in the main database. Finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching and listening to this video, and I do hope you find it useful.